There's a new weapon to combat coronavirus and it's called digital contact tracing. Some think it's the best way to contain the virus by spotting clusters of the illness. But just like every other weapon in the arsenal, contact tracing isn't without its faults. Number 7's Russell Haythorn is going 360. Imagine someone who is COVID positive, moving along Spear Boulevard in Denver, stopping along the way at Starbucks, a grocery store, a gas station. The red dots represent those potentially exposed. This is how digital contact tracing would work through your cell phone data. Officials could contact and contain those exposed. Many believe this is a promising new way to stop the spread of coronavirus as states begin to reopen for business. But using your smartphone to silently track you is viewed by others as a violation of privacy. So we're going 360 with viewers like you, a privacy law expert, a cybersecurity company, and we start with an epidemiologist who explains how contact tracing has traditionally worked when someone tests positive. When we interview them, we get a list of every single person that they've been in contact with. Um, and then we reach out to those people. We call them and tell them. It's a labor intensive process and requires an army of healthcare workers. Denver Public Health epidemiologist Tori Burkett says they did this right before the COVID stay at home order went in place. Sometimes we call people and you know they've only been in contact with say one person. Sometimes we call people prior to the stay at home orders and they've been in contact with 50 people. Digital contact tracing could automate and speed up much of that work and it's cheaper than the old school method of having to hire hundreds of healthcare workers. It's already being used in other parts of the world. Both Google and Apple have modified their systems to allow our Bluetooth functions to do this work. You would be scarily surprised at how accurate it can be. Chris Nyheis owns the cybersecurity company Vigilant. He says your data is already out there. You have a weather app that you allow to have your location. You have Google Maps that tells, you know, says where you live. Those apps all work together in contact tracing. Inside these policy documents that we quickly just accept, many of them say, look, they're allowed to use that data with any affiliate partners that they have. In this case, the partner would be the government, more specifically, your local public health department. Once someone self-reports testing positive, phone data is used to trace where they've been the last few weeks and who was near them. It then sends a text alert, much like those Amber alerts we've all received on our smartphones. In this case, it would read, alert, you have recently been exposed to someone who tested positive for COVID-19. It may seem sci-fi-ish. You got an iPhone? Yeah. But DU privacy law professor Bernard Chow explained to us in pretty simple terms how it works. Go all the way to the bottom. In an iPhone, just go to privacy, location services, at the bottom of that, system services, and then significant locations. It's on. All right, well, where have you been? <laughs> Holy cow, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> in my case, it shows everywhere I've been dating back to Chicago in February, down to the very hotel I stayed in. Chow says if the government does choose to access this data to stop the spread, there must be assurances to the public the government won't store it for long or expose the name of someone COVID positive. They could be exercised and, you know, avoided like leopards. He says this will only work if it's anonymous, meaning whoever gets the alert doesn't know who it is they came in contact with who's positive. And the state would have to delete that information after so many days. Even if we, the government, say that we're not going to use it, there is a temptation uh, by someone uh, to abuse it and use it. Nihai sees even more sinister dangers with the idea. I could potentially drive around your neighborhood, wait for an alert to go off when I'm close proximity to a house, and I can start to pinpoint every home that has somebody that has it in. You can isolate people within your community. There can be hate crimes around that information. Not surprisingly, public opinion is mixed. If it keeps us healthy and safe, then I have nothing to hide and I'm okay with it. I see the good in it uh, that we want to get down to the bottom of this, but bad of the privacy issue. Burkett says health departments that collect the data would treat it like hospitals treat patient information. We follow HIPAA regulations and so we do not release the names of people. Most agree it would have to be voluntary in order to earn public trust because let's face it, it essentially boils down to government surveillance. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7.